Hey, in today's video I'm going to show you how to build out a, a React component library. The reason why I picked to do this video is I'm actually going to do this in an all a uh, number of la languages, so um, Node would be just an example of one, where I'm going to show you how to kind of build out a, uh, a SDK uh, that wraps a REST API so it's easier for people to build with, one of your, um, with your web app. But for now I'm just going to show you how to do a React component library which is uh, actually not related. Um, so if you look at my screen, I've included this repository, um, it's actually private right now, but if you go to this one, it's this, uh, very similar. For example, uh, what I'm trying to show is this. So, um, there's a number of UI elements that I use in a number of my websites, and I don't like to repeat them. Uh, I guess you could think of like Bootstrap or something like that. Um, but, so I decided to start building out a, a UI library for just myself um, because just to save time for me and I keep uh, rebuilding these things and retyping them and stuff and this would just uh, make everything so much simpler for myself and React is great that way and so instead of coding uh, all this twice I decided to just build a React component library, publish it to NPM here it is here, there's no documentation on it right now here it is here um, and the idea is if I wanted to I could just do an NPM install on my own package and use it without uh, recoding any of it so that's what I was doing here. So, for example, this button here, I always, I com this is a common layout for a button I have. And I was going to build out this library here um, for a React Stripe Connect form. Um, it being, I have that Stripe Connect video that I put out for Node.js. And I went through and built out this entire React form and realized that it was a lot of, uh, it was, I don't want to say a waste of time, but there's a lot of um, stuff I was doing and I just thought, you know, this should have just been a component that someone could install third-party component that someone can install. Anyways, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is, you want to go to the commits on this React Stripe Connect form and hit go to starting point, and this is everything you'll need. So with all this code here, um, you should technically be able to um, have someone go in, and let's say you open up a terminal, you can do, right now you can do npm install, and then you can just install the package. So if I do this, I grab my, other, my, pa my UI package. As you can see, it pulls it down from npm and installs it here. And here are all its dependencies. It uses the color library. And it also uses the um, object assign library. I think that's already installed, though, on this project. So I'm just going to open up the code here to show you, you know, what's kind of going on in there. And it's kind of your starting point. Okay, so here it is. Um, here it is, here's the starting point. Um, there's a couple folders here. Uh, there's a git folder, there's a build folder, both are under the git ignore. There's no modules folder, also under the git ignore. And then at the highest level we have a readme, which is uh, currently empty. We have a package JSON, a license, code of conduct, uh, the npm ignore, which is um, important because we don't want everything publishing to, um, to, the, N uh, to the npm registry. Uh, so we don't need the code of conduct going. We don't need the lib code, we just want the build code to go. Uh, and that goes. We don't. Want, uh, we get ignore the build code because we don't. We don't need that on um, the compiled code on GitHub. That's uh, not needed because you can compile it with the lib code. And then we have an ESLint setup, and we have Babel. ESLint setup just so that um, I know I don't. I don't have it on a lot of my other projects, but ESLint setup here so that there's, there's a standard if anyone wants to contribute to the library. And then in lib, we have our index.js. And all that's in here is just a module dot exports, and then exports this, which is just a React component. It says "Hello World." So pretty simple. Um, if you know React at all, you could just add in all your all the React components you want to export um, into this folder. Looks like, it could look the exact same as this, and then you could um, then import them here, and that works. And to actually access this code, uh, I use I personally use. Um, I'll actually show it to you. I either use this Mern boilerplate or I use something called the Just React library. Here, just react.js. Uh, I just reposted this. I use this one as my other option. It just it doesn't have any of the back end stuff or the Mongo stuff, just so it's just the front end. So it looks like this. As you can see, it still says just react on the top front. I'll include this in the description below as well. And what I've done in this library is essentially in the home. I, I, um, I'm actually running the wrong one currently on my port. Kill this, and it's actually this page. So let me just clear this. 
So you want to clone clone this uh, just react repo. You just want to do an npm install, and then after that you want to do an npm run start dev, and you'll verify that your um, it, it works, and you'll do that. And so if I want to test out this um, this here, uh, this this component, what I want to do is I have to add start my npm install, and then the next step is I would have to do an npm run uh, build, which would create my uh, we'll run this com command, which will create my build uh, folder, as you can see. Uh, it goes from lib to build, and it builds it. And then we're going to use a library called link. And so inside of um, React, inside your li your component folder, you're going to do an npm link. I'm going to get a permissions error. Yeah, I did. I'm going to do sudo link, npm link. And it's gonna it's gonna export it. So as you can see, it's, it takes the package from where I currently am and puts it um, the other way. Sorry, it points the the global packet points the global package to the local one here. I can clear that, and then I jump back to my just React, and I can do an npm link, and then I can list out the package name. And as you can see, it takes it from uh, it, it points to the global copy, which then points to my local copy back on my desktop. So it does a little bit of a th uh, point pointing thing through the global copy. Anyway, so that's how you would test it out. And now, if I run npm run start dev, my code looks like this. I have my import here. Import um, my module exp the component that I was in uh, importing, and then the, the package name. And then see, I can refer to it here, just like a React component. It's it's really that simple to to set up a um, React component. I, I'll include all of this code. I'm not trying to get too much into it, uh, just because um, I I don't need to build out a React component right now. Um, so as you can see, just import here, use link to to grab your local copy of the thing uh, of the the React component library, and then just follow this code uh, for a starting point, and then again. You can just reference it. So I'll, I'll just actually show you a demo. So if I want to create a new component, and I'll call it foo, and call it foo.js, and it's going to be a React component. It's going to be called foo. It's going to have a props. Um, and let's just say, grab that from props. And it's going to return an h1 tag. This is an example. It's going to contain the title. So with this, I'm missing a bunch of props on uh, validation. So I'll add the prop types. It's never used, I know. So I'm going to do foo.prop types. And title is always going to be a string. However, uh, title is not going to be required. So I'm going to put a default prop in there. And the last thing i got to do is export the component. It's not food, it's foo. And uh, so that's that. And the last step I have to do is I just have to go to my index.js here and add another line in. Uh, it's not defined. That's because I have to import it. Uh, everything lives in wrapper. If, if you begin to get uh, more in depth here. I recommend putting all these into another folder. Anyways, um, so that's that. And uh, so what I have to do is go back to my, I'm looking at my component library on my terminal here. I'm just going to do an npm run build. And as you can see now it's moved foo in there. And then I'm going to do my npm link, uh, it has to be sudo link, sudo and npm link. And actually, technically, since it's it's all pointing, it's not actually moving things around. This is actually already hot refresh, but uh, the thing is, it's actually not on our. Um, it just says hello world, right? Because we haven't actually called foo, and so here on my home page, I'm gonna also import foo. I'm pass foo with the title, and it's gonna reload. And as you can see here, it's coming in h1 tag with foo. And so these are two separate projects here 
and essentially one project's using the other one as a component, and this is just really useful because you don't have to uh, repeat code if you use in multiple spots. And the last thing I want to say is take a look at my previous videos for the continuous integration and the just testing, snapshot testing, because since these are just components, you really don't have that much logic living inside of them, and as a result, you can um, I just had simple snapshot testing and just maintains a uh, makes it more stable. So that's uh, one of my recommendations. Just check out those two videos. But pretty much that's it for this video. Uh, last thing I'm going to say is if you actually want to publish this, you have to go to um, here. This is the npm.js.com. Sign up for an account. And what you want to do is on your command line, you'll have to uh, build, do the npm run build, and then you'll have to do an npm login. And then uh, the last one is you want to do an npm pub publish, and it will publish the um, the package, assuming that it's not the uh, it's like a unique name and things like that. It'll publish the package to npm.js, and that's all you have to do. It and then you can start doing npm installs. Uh, so this has been a kind of a quick video, but hopefully it's um, useful because if you have any sort of code being repeated, no sense uh, doing it twice. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm coming out with another video next week.